Minecraft, but you start learning to mod with Fabric 117.1. Let's see how to do that. All right, welcome to this tutorial where we actually set up the workspace for Fabric in Minecraft 117.1. It is finally time and there are a few prerequisites that you need to fulfill in order to actually start modding here. The first one is we need a JDK. That is the Java development kit and namely we want the JDK 16. Now I've linked to one of the JDKs that I personally use. This is the Open JDK from Adopt Open JDK. Like I said, a link is in the description below and you will choose Open JDK 16 and Hotspot and then simply download the latest release here. After you download it and simply install the JDK just as you would any other program. After you've installed the JDK from the link I provided, it should be under C program files, Eclipse Foundation, JDK 16027 hotspot. Or if you're watching this in the future, it will probably be a higher number here. The main thing is that it's JDK 16. That's the most important one. Make sure that you keep this folder open because we will need the directory to it in just a little moment. The second thing we are going to need is an IDE. This is a integrated development environment. So basically a fancy text editor that we can use to actually write our code in because we're going to be programming in Java. We will use IntelliJ IDEA. This is perfect for our use case and the community version is free and open source. So this is actually perfect for us. Once again, the link is in the description below and make sure you choose the community version here. Simply download and then install that as well. Right, the third thing that you need, and this might come as a surprise to you, is a little bit of Java knowledge. Now, this is probably going to be the hardest thing for some people, but I highly recommend to first get used to a little bit of Java. If it is going to watch a course or a nice tutorial on YouTube, just get familiarized with it a little bit. It will help you so much, especially if you really want to create a mod. The way I try to explain this usually is the following. Yes, you can learn a few sentences in French. You, you know, you can learn the pronunciation, everything perfectly. You can go to France and people will say, wow, this person can actually speak French. And then they will speak to you in French and you won't understand a thing because you only memorized certain phrases. But if you actually learn French, so you learn the vocabulary and then you learn the grammar and then you learn the pronunciation, all of a sudden, because you have all of the building blocks, you can now abstract and understand if you read a sentence in French, you can understand that because you know the individual parts. And that's the idea of learning Java before you learn Minecraft modding. Yes, you can go through and you can probably do a few things, but every time you want to do something that's more complex than a tutorial exists for, or you will be stuck. So that's something to really keep in mind. I would advise you to get some Java knowledge into you before you start really going hard into Minecraft modding. That is a suggestion of the highest order, but let's continue with the next thing. The last thing that we need is the Fabric example mod right here. Now, the great thing is that Fabric actually has set up a nice little project here for us to download. We can simply go to code and then download the zip file for this. I have the downloaded zip file or already in the directory of my choosing. This is where I want my project to actually go. I will simply extract here and then we have our folder. We can now delete the zip file and I will rename this to fabric dash tutorial dash one. 17.1. The first thing we will do is we will delete the GitHub folder, the readme and the license file because mainly the license file is only for the example mod. The readme is also for the example mod and the .github folder contains some workflows which we don't need at all at the moment. After we've done all of this, we can open IntelliJ for the first time. This will probably look a little bit different to you because you won't have any previous projects here. However, the main thing is the open button here. We can simply click the open button and then locate our our project folder now it's very important don't use any of those choose the actual project folder that is the folder where the gradle the source folder is inside so this one right here just making sure that you select the correct one and then hit OK. We will hit trust because we trust this project and then a new window will open. Some things will happen here in the background. Maybe you will get a failed here. That is not an issue whatsoever. So if you get some red here and some errors, we will fix all of them step by step. So the first error you might be getting is you are using an outdated version of Java 8. Java 16 or higher is required. That is not an issue. This happens if you have another JDK installed. 
So I personally have JDK8 installed as well, because I also do some modding tutorials for 1.16, which still uses Java 8. Therefore, this error might come up. You can fix this very easily by going to File, Project Structure, and then in this Project SDK here, choosing 16, and then Project Level Language will also choose 16. We'll hit Apply. OK, and then this will no longer happen. We won't rerun this at the moment because we can change a few other things before. The next thing we will change is in the gradle.properties file. This is also for the people who have the JDK 8 installed. I would still say that everyone should actually add this. This is going to be the org gradle.java.home equals. And then we will open our folder where we have the JDK 16 installed here and we will copy this directory path right here. Then we will simply have to change the backslashes to normal slashes right here so that it points to the JDK 16 hotspot folder right here. This is important if you, for example, actually do want to program in parallel, for example, with 116 and 117, because those require different Java versions. The Java home variable has to be different. Just make sure that this Java home points to the actual JDK and then this project will use this JDK instead of the JDK that is saved in the Java underscore home variable on your PC. Right now for the second time, we can hit this little elephant right here and let Gradle do its thing. This will take about 20 seconds to a minute, depending on how good your PC is. There might still come up some red things, some errors here. We won't worry about this for the time being. This will set up the project in a way that we will now have actually an SDK setup. One thing that we can immediately change here are some of the mod properties with the mod version. I usually prefer to have the Minecraft version in front and then my mod version. This simply makes it a little bit easier for people to really say, okay, this is a version for 171. Or for example, if that ever comes out 172, then you will simply change this and then whatever the version of your mod is, I will change the Maven group to net.tutorials by Kalpenjo. Now, what you should change this to is net or com dot your name. This will also match whatever we're going to use our source structure in later down the line. So that is basically what this should match. And the archive base name in this case, we will simply call tutorial-mod. As this is the name of my mod and my project, I am very happy with how this looks. This means that if I now open the source folder, you can see that the Java folder will be sort of blue here. And then we will also have the example mod has a C icon next to it. So that's basically the change that we want to see here and it will say build successful once everything is successful. If it is not successful, it really depends on what your error is. There are a few errors that might come up. I've already showed you the one where it says that your Java version is wrong. That was easily fixed. There might be some other errors that might come up. If you do get a build failed, number one, try to run it again. So click the little elephant in the right corner again. If it still fails, then you will have an error log at the top here. So you will have something that's red. Basically everything that's red, copy that over to either a gist github.com or to a paste bin and then you can actually link to that in a comment. Don't just say my build failed. I don't know what happened because with that I will not be able to actually help. Right after we have built this once successfully we can now change a few things and this is going to be great. So the first thing that we want to change is we want to open this example mod class and we actually don't want this to be in the fabric MC package. We want this to be in our package. Now I say our package. Please note that you, what you should do is you should name this your name. So this should be your name. And then this should be the mod ID. And this will be tutorial mod for me. So my name in this case is going to be tutorials by Kalpenjo. Please use your name for this. Don't use tutorials by Kalpenjo. Otherwise, if you show this to other people, they might say, wait, it says tutorials by Kalpenjo. You never made this. That's one of the most important things. Please put your own name in here. Do not put my name in there. You will see that this will throw an arrow. We can hover over this and then move package here. Now this has moved to the tutorials by Kalpenjo tutorial mod package. We also want to change the name of this class. So right click refactor rename. And this is the tutorial mod class. You will note that this is written in Pascal case. So Pascal case is first letter is uppercase. And then every consecutive word is also written uppercase. While this is all written in lowercase. This is because those are packages and Java convention says that package 
packages should all be written in lowercase, while classes should be written in Pascal case. There's one more thing in this mixin package right here. We can simply drag this to our tutorial mod package and say refactor. It will take the example mixin with it. We actually want to rename this as well, or at least I want to rename this. So I will rename this to tutorial mixin as well instead of example mixin. And then we can delete the fabric MC package up here. So simply hit delete and then delete. And then our folder structure here is complete. We still need to change a few things in the JSON files. But for the time being, our package structure is correct. If we open up the assets folder, we can see we have a folder called mod ID in it. We actually can refactor this to our mod ID as well tutorial mod. Now the mod ID is also important in the fabric.mod.json file. As you can see, it's these basically in the third line we have ID and here we have to put in our mod ID. Now I've continuously said that first of all, this one is our mod ID here as well as this one. So our mod ID will be tutorial mod. What's very important about the mod ID is that it has to be all lowercase. The mod ID has to be all lowercase, can only contain numbers, underscore or dash. That's it. I personally advise to simply always only use lowercase. That's gonna make it very easy. I personally suggest always only using lowercase. So tutorial mod is going to be the mod ID of this mod here. So that will work. The name is tutorial mod and then the authors is Kaumjo. This is me. Please also put your own name into it if this is your own mod, of course. Uh, you can fill out the contact here. You don't necessarily have to. I'll just do this. So tutorials by kaupenjo.net and then the sources I actually don't have one so that's okay as well. The license is one other thing that's kind of important so my mods and my tutorials here are usually to always distributed with the MIT license in mind. Uh, if you don't know what that means you can simply keep it as it is or you can simply put in MIT. This simply determines what other people can do with your code that you have written. Right then we come to one of the things that's very important. We can see that the main here points to the example mod but of course we don't have an example mod class anymore. We need to change this to tutorials by mod. This should reflect exactly your, your structure here. What's very important, if this does not look exactly the same for you, you can simply go to this options menu and make sure that both flattened packages as well as compact middle packages are turned off then it will look exactly like this. Right and then down here we will simply change this tutorial mod dot mixin dot json and in the mod id mixin dot json we will refactor rename and change this to our tutorial mod we can then also open this up and then the last thing we really need to do is change this package here this of course also tutorials by kaupenjo or your name of course tutorial mod mixin that one exists we've taken this with us and the client here is the tutorial mixin as you can see there are a lot of things that we need to change but luckily, after we change it once, it's all going to be fine from there on out. Now everything has been done. Everything has been added. Now let's go to this Gradle up here and we can expand this and we can see some tasks. Under Fabric, we see Run Client. If we now run this, then Minecraft should start. Let's see if it does. Now we might be getting a few errors here, mainly this release underscore eight. That's totally fine. That is a normal error as well as another error that will appear shortly. And that is going to be this com mojang auth lib. This is simply because inside of the development environment, we're not locked into a mojang or a Minecraft account. This is why we get this but that's all fine. And as you can see, Minecraft has started with our mod loaded in it. So that is perfect. Everything is working fine. When this works, then you know that you've done everything correct. And now going forward, we can always start the client by hitting this run button up here, and then it will run the client task, which will basically just start Minecraft. We can also go back if we open the run tab here once more. As you can see, this is an output that we had in this on initialize method right here. We actually know that our mod has definitely been added to the game. I would say that's pretty good. Congratulations, you have now successfully set up the workspace for Fabric in 117.1. Now we've not really done anything to add to the game just yet. I personally think that setting up the environment is a very important step that you actually need to do and that you need to get right before you jump in and add all sorts of crazy things. We're gonna have plenty of time to add those things to the game. Like I've already mentioned, if at any time you run into an issue, please feel free to write me a comment down below, please with as much information on the issue as possible. If you have an error log, 
then copy that into a gist or a high spin and link to that as well. This will make it much easier for me to actually diagnose the issue. If you know how to use GitHub, maybe even upload your entire project to GitHub and then share your GitHub repository, that would be even better. Otherwise, if you just write, hey, it didn't work, then I'm very sorry, but that, that just doesn't help. I, I can't help with that. Right, and that was it for this tutorial right here. But do not despair, next time we will be back with adding an item. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. I would of course appreciate a like if you did and I will see you in the next tutorial. So yeah.